Mr. Griffith, you recognize five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want you all to know I'm here today because I have lots of questions uh, about the various uh, things that are going on and, and what is happening. And so I'm not sure I'm going to get to answers. So if, if we don't get to answers, uh, if you all could submit those to the committee so I can review the information, that would be great. Uh, let me also say that I am concerned that we're shifting jobs uh, to other parts of the world where they're not going to pay attention to this. So even if we uh, believe that there is a problem, if we shift all the jobs to some place that's going to create actually more greenhouse gases, are we creating uh, a solution or are we making the problem worse by having some of the EPA regulations? That being said, here's some of my questions. Has anybody studied what the temperatures were, or do we know what the temperatures were during the period in history known as the Great Optimum, which led to the rise of the Mesopotamian and Egyptian cultures? Uh, that was a, a time in history of global warming. We know that, but how warm did it get? Uh, and obviously, those were things that led to uh, the rise of our earlier civilizations. Uh, at some point, uh, we also like to, I'd like to look, have somebody look at the Lesser Optimum, which is a little closer in time, and how much did the temperature rise then? We know that that led to the Vikings. Uh, Professor Needlehofer led to the Vikings dominating uh, Europe for several hundred years and also led to where the uh, ice cap is, is in the north is melting. We're now finding evidence of uh, Viking uh, inhabitation or habitation in those areas. Um, can somebody answer the question, is, has, and has the IPP or the IPCC studied why are the ice caps on Mars melting? Both NASA and National Geographic have had reports on this. Is it in fact, and has there been a study, a shift in the orbit of Mars? Or is it that the sun is putting out more radiant heat? Uh, if we have known, as you suggest, Dr. Somerville, for 150 years, the effects of greenhouse gases, then why 40 years ago when I was in, in elementary and middle school were we taught that uh, an increase in greenhouse gas effect was going to lead to a new ice age. Uh, in regard to radiant heat, the sunspot effects, what, what do we know about that? Uh, I was reading one report here that indicates that, that by 2020 we'll reach a new uh, peak on sunspot activity, and this report actually suggests that the Earth's temperature may raise, be raised by 0 0.5 degrees centigrade as a result to uh, the sunspot activity. And is, could that also be the cause? When we were talking about patients earlier, somebody said, why do you distrust the doctor? And then somebody made a comment, may we get a second opinion? I'd like to know if we've looked at maybe the other patients. And Mars uh, having a similar global warming effect or event going on, have we studied what that is? And has the IPCC done, uh, done that? Um, and then what is the optimum temperature for man? Have we looked at that? Dr. Somerville, you indicated that Pre-1900 industrialized uh, world temperature is where you wanted to go, but in light of the fact that we had uh, a little ice age in the 18th century, are you indicating that we want to return to the little ice age period, or are you indicating something between 1820 and 1900? I don't know the answer to that, and it's, it's just kind of an interesting. These are questions that, that I, believe it or not, lay awake at night trying to figure out. I'd like to actually hear from Dr. Christie and Dr. Pilkey first. And then if we have time, we can move on to the others. But I did anticipate there wouldn't be a lot of time for answers, which is why I started my comments by saying, if you got info, you know, feel free to get it to me and please give it to the committee as well. well. I think what you are describing is the fact that natural unforced variability creates large excursions of temperature that humans have no uh, responsibility for. I didn't see up on the chart here after the Arctic sea ice, I didn't see the Antarctic sea ice, which reached its maximum recorded two weeks later after that particular picture was taken. Um, I'll be happy to answer those questions. That was a boatload of them, uh, if we can have them in writing. <laughs> I, I've been, I'll be happy to give you my notes. These are things I've been worrying about for some time and, and questions, that particularly the one about why were we taught there was a new ice age coming if we've known about this 40 years ago, because all of my constituents were taught that. Now, maybe our books in southwest Virginia just weren't up to par, and maybe they were 150 years out of date, but I doubt it. I'd like that you ask me, can I follow? Yes, uh, the, yes Dr. Pilkey. The point you asked about Mesopotamia and the other regions, these are affected by regional temperatures, and I think this really highlights that the global average surface temperature trend is a very poor metric to use to diagnose climate change. Even global warming is not properly diagnosed by that metric. So the question is, what it, was it like in Mesopotamia, or what was it like in the Arctic, for example? Those are the questions we really need to focus on. Thank you. I only, I only have 11 seconds left, but you're welcome to them, Dr. Somerville. 
I'd like to respond. I wish I had time to respond to all of them. The 1970s uh, global cooling is a myth perpetrated by the popular media. It's in Newsweek magazine. It's not in the scientific literature. Paper by Peterson et al., Bulletin of American Meteorological Society, well, establishes that. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I, I, look, I was there. I studied it. Now, maybe it's a myth. Maybe I'm remembering a myth, but I, I was there. They, it was in my textbook. That's all I can say. Well, I think we'll just uh, stipulate that there may be differences of opinions about that. 